After the success of last year's time-lapse cameras, we decided to redeploy them in May 2015, again at Kronerbrain in Svalbard. We hope that these will capture images of the glacier surface over the summer to further our research into glacier dynamics. Last year, the cameras were arranged to gain maximum coverage of the glacier surface. Five out of seven of these time-lapse cameras worked throughout the entire season, capturing images every 30 minutes. These images have been used to determine carving rates at the glacier front and surface velocities over the entire glacier tongue. We have also been able to monitor water levels in superglacial lakes on the glacier surface, which provides valuable information about the water conditions at the bed of the glacier. This year, eight cameras will be placed at Kronobrain, focusing more on the lower section of the glacier. These cameras are set out as pairs to enable stereoscopic photogrammetry. Stereoscopic photogrammetry is the extraction of meaningful data from two sets of images focused on the same target. Common features in the image sets can be triangulated to obtain distances. This is a reliable way to gain velocities of the glacier surface, calculate the volume of icebergs carving off the front, and determine the amount of water in the surface lakes. We access the mountains adjacent to Kronobrain via helicopter. It's a short 10 minute flight to the glacier from New Orlesund, which is where we are based. When first flying over Kronobrain, one thing we immediately noticed was how much the front has changed since we were last there eight months ago. What is so dramatic is how much the glacier has stretched and thinned. As the carving loss has reduced over the winter, the ice at the front of the glacier has stretched out forward, thinning as it does so. Parts of the front now appear to be at sea level, rather than the tall ice cliffs that we are used to seeing. One of the challenges of installing the cameras is the difference in terrain between the mountains to the north and south of Kronobrain. On Garwood Toppen, the ground is very soft and loose, and so it can be difficult to bolt down the tripod. Instead, we find that digging the tripods in makes them much steadier, and we use buried anchor plates to stabilise the platform. Colette Hugda is much harder terrain, largely comprising of gypsum. Here we have to drill bolts into the bedrock to pin the tripod down. Camera 6 fell over last year and it is suspected that one of the bolts popped because of freeze thaw expansion. Therefore, in addition to bolting, the tripods were weighted down with sacks of rock. Duct tape is a glaciologist's best friend in the field. The stereo configurations mean the cameras have to be aligned accurately to ensure adequate overlap in the paired images. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. One evening, we went out to collect GPS readings of the camera locations and check they were working. From Garwood Toppen, the views were stunning. At 11pm, it was very cold though. It was a challenge to keep warm at times. We will return to Kronobrain in September 2015 to see if our time-lapse cameras have survived, and hopefully with full memory cards. <laughs>